program um, here, we um, started it about a year and a half ago, I believe, but we went through a very long phase of what I would call training and almost induction, whereby we were restricting, you know, um, like how many scans we did, who we were offering it to, uh, because we just wanted to make sure, obviously, we were well trained up and very equipped at um, producing good studies. Um, Lisa Banfield, who you would have met, um, she would have been trained um, both by an international team, but also thank you, Dr. Sayambo, who would have helped to train her further and do some more education on top of some little short courses that she did. So we just felt that being a, a new technology and something that we were not familiar with, we wanted to make sure we were really um, good at it before we kind of put it out there. So um, at the Diabetes Center, we have several programs in operation. Uh, we have the polyclinic program or the, the public health program, um, obviously facilitated by the Ministry of Health. And all persons who are referred from the polyclinic actually get vascular studies done as part of their cycle of care here. So they, there are a number of, um, uh, I guess, care providers and also um, investigations that they receive. Other persons do either refer, so care providers do refer their persons to diabetes or some people self-refer. And in general, it's recommended that people who are over the age of 50 with diabetes or hypertension should actually have a vascular screen as part of their regular screening. Yeah, the same way you would check your kidneys, etc. So that is a, a standard that's been put out, you know, by the American Heart Association and also um, the International Board Group for the Foot. And um, then also, if you're younger than that, but you've had diabetes for more than 10 years, or you have other risk factors going on, a family history, you've had a heart attack, you've had a stroke, uh, smokers. Uh, if you, you're a smoker. Um, interestingly, I'll just relate, because uh, I find this interesting yes. when discussing this, is that obviously we have a lot of young men who smoke and there's more marijuana smoking around the younger men. But I was discussing with um, consultant um, and the surgeon, Dr. Nina Yap, who would hope to be here today, but she's not, she wasn't able to make it. They are seeing a high proportion of vascular disease in very young men. And we believe it is related to the, the smoking. Um, and the other thing to, to remember, there, there are another few important points. Um, in our population in the Caribbean and Barbados, for some reason, we are actually seeing very severe peripheral artery disease in people um, at younger ages. And when you have diabetes, that peripheral artery disease can be very extensive. So it means it doesn't just necessarily block off like one segment, but it blocks off the whole length of the artery. Um, rates of um, arterial insufficiency are actually relatively high in the ulcer patients that we see here. We just did an audit and PAV was about uh, present in about 60% of our patients with, di with diabetic foot ulcers. So we do actually advise all of our patients who come through with foot ulcers to do screening. Um, as would have been explained um, earlier, you can't only rely on feeling the pulses because when you have diabetes, you can get calcium deposits and you can still feel the pulse because it gets transmitted through, but it doesn't mean that there is not narrowing or blockage. So this is just like another level of testing. And um, even with this test, if we did this or we did an examination and we think that you have PAD and you have an ulcer, if we need to do other testing to confirm it, we go to higher levels of testing because this still is a screening tool as well. When we talk about the vascular system, we're talking about the circulation, what people call the circulation. So the arteries that supply your heart, your legs, your brain, um, and all parts of your body. Um, and the disease process that can affect all of those arteries is called atherosclerosis, which is where they build up a plaque or deposits on the arteries usually due to fatty deposits as well as inflammation and as well as cholesterol buildup. Blood pressure, smoking, um, sedentary lifestyles are things that contribute to that process. And then of course, we know diabetes. We tend to see a high proportion of peripheral vascular disease in diabetic patients. Um, and anyone that, is, that has peripheral vascular disease, we know is also at risk of having heart disease because the same process that causes the buildup of plaque in the legs is the same process that causes the buildup of plaque in the heart and can also cause that in the brain. So when we are looking at patients that come in with different symptoms, those symptoms can clue us in into what could be going on in different parts of the body. And when it comes to peripheral vascular disease, patients may come in with something as simple as heaviness in the leg, they may come in with pain in the legs when they walk. Um, and then of course, when it gets extreme, they can come in with ulcers and wounds that are not healing. And those can progress to the point where they, if it's not treated, it can lead to an amputation. So we wanna catch it early, we wanna address the risk factors, 
and the screening program here is to try and catch it before they get to that point of where they're having ulcers or things that may end up in an amputation.